Wow. I call this meeting to order. This is a Livingston Parish Council meeting. Today is January the 14th. It's a few minutes after 6 p.m. All right, we're now going to have the invocation led by Mr. Jeff Ard. I have asked Miss Sandy if she would do that for us. Pledge of Allegiance, Randy, you want to lead us in the I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Roll call. Mr. Here. Mr. Watson. Here. Mr. Calvert. Here. Mr. Harris. Here. Mr. Morris. Here. Mr. Glatt. Here. Mr. King. Here. Mr. Earlinghouse. Here. Here. All right. Agenda item number five. We're going to go ahead and move that to the bottom of the agenda. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, I just want to say before we address agenda item number five that it's been a pleasure. I've thoroughly enjoyed being the council chair, uh, serving the people of Livingston Parish, and serving the council. And thank you for allowing me to serve. Thank you, Sam. Okay, so at this time, agenda item number five, this is to elect a chair and a co-chair uh, elections for the year of 2021. So um, does anybody want to nominate somebody to be the future chair? I nominate Gary Talbot. Got a nomination for Gary Talbot. Wait, I got a second. Do we need a second? Okay, <laughs> got a second. I don't think we need it, but that's good. Um, is there any other nominations? No? Why don't do we need to vote? Because I mean, is that an automatic in? We need to vote. Okay, so let's go ahead and like call. I'm just messing. <laughs> 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 you drove that out too long. <laughs> okay, so um, a call for the vote. Mr. Matt. Yes. Mr. Wasson. Yes. Mr. Talbert. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Matt Morris. Yes. Mr. Gillette. Yes. Mr. Keene. Yes. Mr. Earlinghouse. Yes. Mr. Art. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Okay, folks, I hope I can uh, live up to the standard been set before me and uh, hopefully make it make y'all glad that you uh did this and not regret it at a later date so, <laughs> anyway uh the second item on the agenda of uh, second item on five will be to elect a co-chair is there a nom i'd like to open the nominations for co-chair mr Ard. mr mr gerlinghouse would like to nominate mr r is there any more nominations for that at this point in time no nominations we'd like to close it miss sandy could you take the vote please mr matt yes mr. Yes. Mr. Chopper? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. McMorris? Yes. Mr. Delat? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Gerlinghouse? Yes. Mr. Ward? Yes. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Congratulations. Way to go, guys. Yeah. Y'all gonna make the crowd. I know so. Going to the west side. Shame. Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, you know, Mr. Chairman, you know, the order here, we can't. The camera, the camera seems to, you know, always be focused on this area over here, so I thought I'd be on camera more often. So <laughs> okay, gentlemen, just joke. everybody happy with their seating? I want to move to the west I'm side. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, all of a sudden, everybody wants to be on the west side. Yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> cell phones. At this point in time, we'd like to ask everyone to either turn off or mute your cell phones. Heck, I hope I did it. You probably. I'm good. Uh, 
Item seven, public input. We will have public input on certain items and it'll be identified. We'll, we'll identify when the public input is and everybody can come up to the podium and you know give their name, address, and then make whatever comments they had during the public input and then the council will close the public input after that item is headed. Number eight, presentations. Uh, community cleanup day. Uh, this is uh, Waste Pros wanting to sponsor a community cleanup day in the Watson area. Would y'all ladies like to come up and, and make a presentation related to that? Mm -hmm. I would state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Bobby Jo Garion. My address is 33865 Clinton Allen Road, 70706. My name is Lori Christensen. My address is 33285 Carrie Lane, 70706. Okay. I'm going to speak first and I'll uh, turn it over to her. And I'm going to speak from my heart. Um, I've been to an ordinance meeting about this before and all of you people that are here and the council all know that we have a tremendous problem of litter in our parish. It just I drive here every day and on the way it just it sometimes it makes me cry like the Indian used to when we were kids um, I, I'm pretty sure that the chamber has something going to try to make a parish-wide campaign we have got to educate people um, but in Watson we've been doing this for a long time this is probably our probably going on our 12th or 13th year at least twice a year <coughs> Uh, Miss Susan Harris and Mr. Beverly Tim started this years ago. Um, we just tried to get as many people as possible on a Saturday to pick up. Perry Russian gets um, sheriff's um, trustees. They help us. This year we did not get to follow through with our plans, because, of course, because of COVID. But we've already um, have a date set. I don't care COVID or not. We're picking up garbage in Watson on March the 6th. We want, and, and I'm not, and it's not just Watson. Well, it is. It's Scooter and um, Gary's, both um, their uh, districts. We start at Lockhart Road, and we come down. We go down Kane Market and Springfield, get as many people as we can. We have all the tools to do it. But Waste Pro has stepped in, and they're going to help us with dumpsters. Um, we have somebody that's going to donate garbage bags. But we really would like all of the communities to, to get involved in this. Um, I'm not sure who to contact. If y'all could let Gary and, and, and Scooter know so that we can talk to somebody that's active in your community. Because um, we really want to get this going parish ride at least twice a year. And we, we have to start something to start teaching people about garbage. I, I don't know if it starts in elementary school, in the homes or what, but it is, I think it's worse than it's ever been right now. And I know it's because our population is growing and there's, there's not garbage cans everywhere also. That may be something else we have to look into, but I'm very happy that Waste Pro got in touch with me and Lauren and um, we're really excited about it. And March 6th, you'll see us with our orange vests picking up garbage. So, I have a you question. want to tell them about Waste Pro coming? <clears throat> yeah, I have a question. Yes. So Waste Pro is going to provide a dumpster. Uh, uh, roll, roll is, off. Is, yes. is will there be one single location, or will there be multiple locations? That's what we're working on right now. It's Watson. Right. I mean, we can. We plan to do something quarterly throughout the parish. Okay. I think that's fantastic. And, and I was just curious: is it limited to Mr. Talbert's and Mr. Scooter's district? And if not. Does that mean people who's had this stuff laying around that could easily be strode across the parish if they chose on that day to bring and dispose in those dumpsters wherever they located? Is that is that? I, I don't think that we would turn anyone away from putting stuff in those dumpsters, but you know, if we did it quarterly, we'd like to go around the parish, and every area could have their the opportunity to do the same, but closer to where they are. Could you get us a, a, is it possible to get us an address where those dumpsters would be on one looks like I think they're going to be located at the corner of uh, Men Road Extension and Highway 16. There used to be a little restaurant there that got torn down and owners granted permission to put the... Is that uh, north of the Methodist Church? You're talking it's about? kind of cross street from Methodist Church. You know where Down Home used to be? Where what? Yeah. Down Home. Yeah. Right? It's going to be in that spot. Going to be right, in that right there. Yeah, oh, they're going okay. to put the dumpsters, at that, they're going to put the roll off at that location <laughs> and, and 
Yeah. And we're going to um, do the hauling of the dumpsters and also take care of the disposal. So for March 6th, that's the one location for that yes. as of right now? Yeah. As of right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, and so, you know, they're, they're going to they're gonna try to move it. So you need to reach out to, to well, that's what our Yeah, going I mean, forward, I mean, if, you know, where there's a need, like I said, we'd like to do something quarterly and move around the parish. So if you find that in your district that, you know, just reach out and we'll, you know, plan Do a trash day. Yeah, and, and or, okay, well, that, that's fantastic. People need to be aware that, it, it, that all this material is going to be going to Woodside, and, and, and Waste Pro is going to pay the tip and fee to the landfill, but there's still restrictions on what can go in there. You know, you can't bring there, the things that you can't put in your personal garbage can't go in this either. So, you know, no batteries, no chemicals. You know, there's still some restrictions because it's still going to the same landfill that's permitted for particular for household waste. Right. So, you know, it, it's still the same regulations that apply on, on what you can put in your garbage can, but you know, it will be it will be available. And in, in, in the past, I've, I've, I've worked with mm -hmm. Bob and Joe and Mr. Beverly before plenty of times. And because basically you need an adult, you know, the high school provides a tremendous group. Boy Scouts come out, Girl Scouts come out. Uh, I know Bobby Joe, when she was there, always had her cross country team out there. The football team comes and so we'll group a group of kids with an adult and, and, and they'll get out and go, you know, work a particular road or area. And then we've got these bags that we've got to deal with in the past and we would ride around with trailers, you know, yeah. getting them picked up. And, and, and then we would, you know, go big, big businesses to let us throw them in their dumpster. And now we have a, we have a place to go with them. So it's going to, it's going to help the process. Plus it'll allow, you know, some of those things that, that, that people have struggled with getting taken care of. They'll have a place to come, you know, with this area. And then maybe, you know, other councilmen can reach out and, and hopefully, you know, create a situation similar to that in their districts and or in their areas, you know, multiple groups right. getting together. I had, Mr. Wascom, I had people reach out to me before, about 30 minutes before we left in your areas that want to do it. Um, and who's like South Denham Springs? Juven, Mr. Harris, same thing. Um, they've already contacted us today. We've already had people in your area. Well, I tell you, if you if you would, I, I, if you'd be interested, if you maybe get with me after this is over, and let's go talk to the mayor of Denham, and we could get the mayor and the city council on board to do it say a day in, 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 in Denham Springs as well. Okay, that sounds. I mean, we're we're open to you know helping the community, you know, throughout okay. the parish. And I'll get your number and holler at you. After, okay. After this. Well, it's been a. Uh, few years ago, I know they had a, a pickup deal off of Walker, no, North Corbin at the park up there, and they had everything set up there. You could bring tires, you could bring paint, and they had, Boy Scouts was there, and they'd take and mix all the paint together, mm -hmm. you know, and if it was still good paint, then there's somebody come by and pick it up, and they'd sell it. People just want paint or primer, oh, wow. nothing else. Yeah. Wow. And had all those type things going yeah, that, that was kind of a one-off, what you're talking about there? Yeah. In Walker? In Walker. Well, remember, yeah. Layton did it yeah. two mm -hmm. years ago over there at the, at the fairground. Yeah, they would take yeah. They didn't have but much they had it separated. What, just, they had people come and get I mean, that, that was pretty awesome. That, um, we just want that. people to stop littering. I, I, I don't know. Right. Yeah. I live by Scooter. One of our it's neighbors, terrible. we take uh, every three weeks, one of us from about 100 yards, and we take turns <coughs> keeping this ditch clean. And it's from people stopping at the stop sign and throwing it out. It's obvious. And we're going to, we got some justice of the peace that want to help us. Um, you know, we just, this is really, really, really dear to my heart, and I'm going to make it work in this parish. I don't know how, but I'm going to. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> I'm really going to help. Thank y'all, ladies. We appreciate thank, thank it. Thank y'all very much. Uh, item number nine, adoption of the minutes. Y'all all have got, got the email uh, from the minutes on December 17th. Does everybody have a chance to review? Got a motion by Mr. Gerlinghouse, second. second by Mr. Mack. Any opposition? No opposition. We're going to consider that adoption of the minutes. Item 10, public hearing and adoption of LP ordinance 20-35. Uh, men's section 50-13 littering parts D, E, and F. We want to open the public hearing and ask Mr. S Ms. Sandy to read by title, please. This is proposed ordinance LP ordinance 20-35, ordinance to amend chapter 50, offenses miscellaneous, section 50-13, littering of the code of ordinances and for the parish of Uh 
Uh, so the public hearing is open. Is there anybody from the anybody from the public, anybody in the audience would like to comment on uh, item 10, which is LP ordinance 20-35? Nobody would like to comment this time. We'd like to close the public hearing and open discussion for the council. And if the council's any comment, we'd like to recognize you. We'd also allow this time for a motion and a second. I, I got some comment. Mr. R. I've talked to uh, a couple of the constables on this. And they actually brought some concerns up to me that really I didn't, I guess, didn't think of. I know the last time I brought up the conversation about uh, are they actually trained to pull strange vehicles over. Uh, one of the constables told me that he would not want to do this. He said because he's in an unmarked vehicle, he's going to be flashing his lights trying to get somebody to pull over. I know I've told my kids don't pull over for a strange vehicle, and I can tell you if my daughter called me and said somebody's flashing lights trying to pull her, her over, I'm gonna probably be waiting outside when they pull up. So I really feel like we're putting these people that are in unmarked vehicles in a bad situation, and they're gonna think they have the authority to chase these people down and try to write a littering ticket. You know, I think programs like what these ladies are trying to do is what we need to do to fix the littering in our parish. I mean, we have a sheriff's office that writes tickets. We have a marshal's office that writes tickets. I mean, you know, tickets are being wrote to litter. But I, I just don't, I don't feel like this is gonna help the situation. Well, I tell you, uh, if you don't mind, there's okay. one thing that that uh, gets to me is when we do overlay on these roads, I'm gonna use Hill and Hood for a prime example. And Mr. Sam can tell you about this. They go out there and clean it up. Two days later, they got mattresses and all this kind of stuff piled up out there again, you know. And I don't know how you're gonna catch people like that. But we need to figure out something. Well, and I, Mr. Terry, can I? Go ahead, go ahead. So I think, I think what we're missing here is that, that this is already state law, right? So we're just mimicking state law. If, if a constable doesn't want to engage and do that, then that's fine. What Bubba's talking about is what this is mainly about, getting the people that are throwing huge piles of stuff, mattresses, couches out. The one guy throwing the beer can out, they're not going to chase somebody down. You'd have to physically see him, like you said. How often do you see that? I see it occasionally, not all the time. But this would maybe make it where those constables can go out. They already It's already in our ordinance for them to do that. We're just changing the word to match the state law. Uh, I think it would make it to where they would feel better about going out and doing the job. They had no way of receiving funding from finding that person that threw that mattress or that couch out, finding a receipt in it, calling them, tracking it down. Uh, and they will now because uh, when we talked to Jennifer, she said she's got a mechanism in place to receive the funds and then send it out to the people. So I don't think, Jeff, I, I got your concern too. I, I do understand that. But I think if we don't stop the dumping of the big household stuff, and that's the thing that my constable really pushes to do, that's the thing we need to stop. We, we can clean up from day one every day and if they're gonna throw it back out of their car. If somebody catches one, I mean, my, my constable's not unmarked. He's, a, he's got a truck with lights and everything on. So, then the word will spread. Hey, y'all better not throw your junk out because Rupert's gonna get you, you know? Uh, but that's what I think. It, and it's just mimicking state law. If it was changing it a whole lot or putting our own take in, I, I, maybe we would have more concern about it. They would already, I mean, go ahead, Mr. Burke. My issue is if it's already state law, they would be doing it. I mean, why aren't they doing it already? Because they didn't and have a means to that's get the, not fund really the, the fee. fee. <laughs> but I guess I'll address the, the elephant with that and I'll play the bad guy on this. If you create an avenue of, um, making money, so to speak, how do you rein that in? Rein that in? I, because now, and you said yourself at one time, 
how do you know who put that trash there? Yeah. Will they go through it? Right. I don't know. I mean, you don't, is that, mm -hmm. unless you physically see them doing that, and unless you physically see them putting it out there, otherwise they go through the trash, they'll find that they'll find like a piece of mail or something, yeah. you know, um, and then it goes to where they find some trash on the road. <coughs> well, if come out of the back of the truck, you know, uh, and then now you, you're having to defend yourself from a $500 minimum fine, $200, yeah. $200 to $500 fine, right. and you didn't, I mean, you didn't do it. So the only way you can really say, hey, look, saw him do it, you know, yeah. uh, as far as the mattresses and stuff goes, or the couches and stuff, I see that, and it's, I mean, it's atrocious. No amount of educating, I don't think, is going to stop those people. And if they're already doing it, I mean, I just think with what Mr. R said, as far as you, know, you pull some, you get go to get pulled over, and some guys in a jeep. I'm not pulling over, yeah. and you know, I have daughters too. I would tell them not to pull over. I agree. Yeah. And I, it's a, it's a situation where, I mean. Right now, if the sheriff's department or the, or the, the marshals write these tickets, the money it goes to the parish of the 21st JDC, mm -hmm. um, where there's five degrees of separation, who gets the money? Because that's the trickle down back through. So you're not your your sheriff's deputy isn't he's not going out to write a ticket because the sheriff's department gets more money. Right. Yeah. Uh, he's just going to go do it because it's his job. Do we need to, do I think maybe more of those tickets need to be written? I mean, I would say yes, but I mean, how do you know they're in the, they're in the same situation that I'm explaining that the constables would be in? How do you know if you see a, a, a piece of litter on the side of there that they put it there? Um, the only really, there's only two ways really to stop littering the parishes. One is education. Like they said, you have to educate people, I mean, to not do it or, or to care. But, I mean, everybody should know littering is bad. You know, it, it just it devalues and makes your, makes your community look bad. They should know that. We to make them care. Bless you. Bless them. And two, and I, we've said, said before, parish -wide, mandatory parish wide garbage pickup. If you make it mandatory, mm -hmm. you know, if you own a residence, then you have to have a garbage can. And I believe that a lot of a lot of people don't have garbage pickup because they don't want to pay for it. And they'll either throw it in a dumpster at work or they just throw it out. And there's a there's a avenue we could we could go after in that regard where you could possibly save the residents who don't live in the municipality's money every month if we just made garbage pickup mandatory. I think this looks good on paper. I think in practice, it's, um, it, it won't make a difference and it could create, potentially create problems where there, where there aren't any now. Well, here's the issue. This is already on the books. Okay, the only thing we changed was some wording to bring it into play with the state. So if we don't want to have it on the books, we can throw it out and, and our constables can go by state law. Okay, let's, let's recognize Mr. Uh, Mack at this time. Appreciate that. Um, I just want to say that I think all of us up here um, have a hard time with littering. I can't stand it. I mean, I, I literally can't stand it. I, I try to persuade people how it's it's unacceptable and it's, it just makes our community look terrible. It depreciates the value of our properties and it's just a horrible, horrible, horrible thing. And um, Saying that, you know, I'm always I had to call and try to get a couch and mattress picked up on Sykes Road. And a couple of weeks ago, you know, there was actual trash bags on the side of George White Road. And at the end of Strawberry Lane, there's always a couch or a TV or something. And uh, you know, you ride up 43 and, and, and down these parish roads, and there's more trash on the side of the road than in the garbage can. And I just can't stand it. But saying that, I agree with Mr. R, and I think that the Sheriff's Department should be responsible for the citations, and I just, that's just how I feel about it. And I do think that as a community, we need to try to just, you know, 
persuade our neighbors, you know, and, and, and all that group, you know, that it's just, you know, quit doing it. Quit doing it as a community, it, it, you know, and, and, and try to handle it that way, you know, and, and like through this effort here, you know, um, you know, I, I think that's the way to approach this and, and more signs and just education and, 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 and handle it that way, you know, so I'm in favor of your Sheriff's Department writing the citations and being responsible for determining who specifically, you know, investigating and who specifically did that type of uh, violation. You know, I think that's the best approach at this time. So Mr. DeLatte. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a, a view that coincides with Mr. Scooter's. Um, litter is about enforcement, like we said, and about education. This is a tool for enforcement. The state has already said constables can do this. I have the same roads that everyone else has that's full of letter from mattresses and so forth. There's a lot of good ideas maybe out there to do it, but the bottom line is we have opportunity now to give a letter to, to law enforcement to do this, and I think I, I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and, and adopt this. So we've got a motion by Mr. Uh, DeLatte and a second by Mr. King. Is anybody else going to comment, Mr. 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 I, I, I want to say it had nothing to do with his motion right now, but I okay. uh, have a place down, down what they call that street. <laughs> it's the Graves Creek, Lakes Graves Creek. It's a subdivision. Anyway, a man took his wood fence down, put it out by the road. <coughs> and what happens whenever one person does it, that other person, they follow suit and they put couches and they put everything else out there, you know. And we're not supposed to be picking that stuff up. Right. So anyway, we have to get somebody else involved in it. Go ahead, Mr. McMore. So what I would like to see as a council, I'd like to see us work with waste management because a lot of a lot of people are, all in our area cannot afford a garbage bill for us to go up there and dump the garbage when they're gonna charge you 80 and $90 a trailer to go up there and dump. I get the same calls over and over because they cannot afford to bring an additional trailer up there to dump their garbage. So uh, that's one, one thing I would love to go look at. What can we do with waste management up here to get them to work with the people of the parish? If you're already paying a garbage bill, bring your stuff up here. Go ahead, Mr. Shane. No, I just wanted to support you when you finished. Okay. But that is an excellent idea because, to the best of my knowledge, Tinchboro Parish waste management out there, and I don't know all the, you know, ins and out about the charges and fees and, and all this kind of stuff, but I know that you can go to that um, waste facility and you can actually dump your household garbage for free if you bring it, to the best of my knowledge. Now, we can double check on that, but I think that's a good avenue um, if you could allow people to go to the dump, you know, and, and, and dump it there, you know, for not a large fee. Um, I mean, I know that everything costs money and they need to make money in order to run their business and all that type of stuff, but I, I like that avenue that you're but, uh, going down. Right there. Well, well, I don't know. So, so as much money as we spend in with waste management here at our parish, I think it can work with the people here to take some of these big items, the beds, the washing machines, what I call about all the time, to go get hauled, you know, the parish has got to go pick it up. But if people have the chance to go up there and dump it, if they have a current bill with, 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 the, with waste management, I think it will solve not all of it, but it's going to solve some of it. Thank you. Well, you know, can I make, I, mean, can I guess I get to talk a little bit. I mean, okay, so I guess to, to address, to, well, I know I'm supposed to talk less now. So to address, to address kind of what Shane said and, 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 and Mr. And Mr. McMorris said is that in, in Tangible Ho, the parish operates a landfill. So it's a little bit different situation. In, in the parish, the landfill is operated as a business by waste management. It's permitted. It, it used to be the parish's landfill a long time ago. And, and that, I don't know, that 16 years ago, I think that deal was resolved. And, and, and waste management took over the permit and took over ownership of the landfill. Uh, the parish gets a tipping fee or a percentage of the tipping fees over there in, in our budget. Um, Look, this ordinance, this ordinance is, you know, we deferred it last at last meeting at the request of the uh, district attorney. Uh, him and Mr. Moody were gonna review it. 
I happened to visit with Scott, Mr. Perilou, the district attorney, earlier in the week, and he thought that the ordinance as written concurred with state law and, and, and got our ordinance in compliance with what state law was. One of two things needs to happen tonight. Now, I, we either need to vote this ordinance in with the amendment so that we are concurrent with state law, or we need to eliminate this ordinance because there are conflicts within it that conflict with state law. And then and then let the let the constables do what the legislature and, and has allowed them to do for years. So, you know, this thing was brought to us in a manner to, to, to resolve some conflicts. Uh, I think we've resolved them, you know, and, and now it's now concurred to state law. If we don't want it on the books, that's fine. I mean, state law allows them to do what, what this ordinance allows them to do. So we either need to clean it up and make it concur with state law, or we need to eliminate it completely. But, you know, like the restriction that we, that, that, that our ordinance said that only allow it, you know, to be held in the 21st JDC is in direct conflict with, with what state law says. And so, you know, we had some fines that were in conflict with state law. So basically, this ordinance was, was, was written in an effort, the, the ladies, you know, put time in it to, to, to make this thing concur with state law. And if we don't like it, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't think that's fine. I think we need to then, if we don't want to support it, then we need to eliminate it. We do not need an ordinance on our books that conflicts with state law. And so if there's if there's no other comment. I, I got two, okay, two comments. We're going, let, we're going to let Mr. Ard, if everybody's good with that, after Mr. Ard, we'd like to call for the vote. All right. Uh, one of the other things that, that concerns me is it says a constable may issue a summons or serve subpoenas anywhere in the parish. Anyway, so that means we can have the guy from Watson going down to Marpaul and out of his area just because, hey, I saw somebody do something. Right now, they pretty much stay in their area. That's where the people in that area elect them to be there, to be their constable. You know, it's no different than us. I mean, we have common courtesy here. I mean, I'm not going to go down to Mr. Delap's area talking to people without him knowing about it. I'm just not going to do that. Some of the others here might do that, but I'm not going to do that. And the other thing is a constable can write a ticket right now for liquor. He does not need this. Right now, he can write a ticket for liquor. He can write. He has the authority right now to write this ticket. All we're doing is making an avenue to make money. And it's just like Mr. Gerlinghouse said. Once you give it to them, you're not going to be able to rein it in, and it'll be no difference than going to Golden Meadow and Sorrento and then places where that's their means of making money, and it's just any little thing they think they can throw at you to make that money, they're going to do it. And are, are you, you saying Golden Meadow has speed track? <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, no, no, I, know I that. didn't say that. You just said that. Yeah. I thought that's would what you, you said. Would you like to make a substitute motion to eliminate this ordinance from our books? I'm, I'm fine. Well, let's just go on and vote, vote and see how this goes. First. Okay. All right. I mean, I don't want to take everybody as an opportunity to vote. Okay, Mr. Harris. I'll make it quick. I don't know of another board member on here that's been through what I have with the garbage. Because I was on, it was police jury back then. When we created the garbage, the dumps and all that, we had to do away with the our landfills because they didn't meet specifications. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mr. Lockhart and I, we went to North Carolina, got a big rig, brought it back, set it up, and used that until waste management took over. But uh, a lot of people didn't like the idea whenever you told them it was mandatory. Yeah. And they still don't like it today. I just want to throw that out there. I love mine because I can't go to walk her to the landfill and, and back, you know, what I get picked up for. Right. Miss Sandy, would you call the vote, please? Mr. Matt. No. Mr. Wascom. No. Mr. Yes. Mr. Harris. And what is this one? How's it going? This, 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 is, this, this vote, this vote is to amend the existing ordinance to concur with state law. No. no. Mr. McMorris. No. Mr. DeLatte. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Gurley House. No. 
Mr. R. No. Okay, so the motion fails. I well, don't make. Go ahead. Can we make a substitute motion to do away with the ordinance? I mean, uh, Sandy, at this point in time, if we voted, can we can we then now just can we make a motion, or we have to reintroduce it to? So we're gonna so we're gonna we're gonna challenge the ordinance committee to take up eliminating this ordinance off our books if, we're, if that's how we're gonna do it. Then we, then, but make no mistake, the state law is still gonna allow them to have the thing and the fines still be collected and them still participate in the revenue because that's the way state law is. Written. Item 11, public hearing and adoption of LP ordinance number 20-36. Uh, we'd like to open the public hearing and ask Ms. Sandy to read it by title. Mm -hmm. extend, expand, improve, maintain, and operate roads, bridges, and related road drainage throughout the parish, and acquire equipment related thereto, and construct, acquire, extend, expand, improve, operate, maintain, equip, and furnish jail facilities of the parish, and further providing for other members in the connection area. Yes, sir, Mr. Ryan. It's just the adoption of the ordinance to renew the tax. I make it motion. Well, we, we, we got, we, we, we've got the public hearing open. Does anybody want, from the general audience want to speak on the public hearing? If not, we're going to close the public hearing. We've got a motion from Mr. Uh, Keene and a second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. Is that the way it went? Yep. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody from the council would like to comment? Is there any comment you need additionally, Mr. Ryan? Uh, nobody in the council wants to comment. Let's go ahead and call the roll on this. Mr. Mack? Yes. Mr. Wasson? Yes. Mr. Calvert? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. McMorris? Yes. Mr. Gillette. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Gerlinghouse. Yes. Mr. R. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Happy New Year. Everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Item 12, public hearing and adoption of LP ordinance dash 20, I mean 20 dash 37, authorization of a sale of a sink, uh, triangular tract of land to the joint landowners. Uh, we'd like to open the public hearing and ask Mr. Sandy to read by title. Okay. This is an ordinance authorizing the Legacy Parish Council to convey the following described property that Description might be bigger than a piece of property. <laughs> uh, this public hearing, would anybody in the audience like to comment at this point in time? Nobody would like to comment. We're going to close the public hearing, open it for the council. At that point in time, we'll entertain a motion and second. Make a motion. Got a motion by Mr. No, second. By Mr. Wascombe. Got a second by, by Mr. McMorris. Is there any objection or any more discussion? Any objection? No objection, so ordered to carry unanimously. Item 13, adopt a resolution of support urging the Louisiana legislature to pass legislation, legislation which will invest in the installation of high-speed internet for rural areas. Uh, the letter was sent by State Senator Beth Mizell and State Representative Daryl Desitel, put on the agenda by Mr. Mack. Mr. Mack, do you have any comment? Would you like to talk about this thing real quick? Yes, I mean, um if you read the letter that Ms. Uh, Mizell and Mr. Desitel sent to the Livingston Parish Council, if you read the resolution, to me, this is uh, very important uh, for the expansion of uh, broadband in rural areas, uh, such as rural Livingston Parish. And we all know that um, the necessity of having high-speed internet, uh, we, we learned a lot about that in the last, uh, this last year. And um, so I just wanted to 
put this on the agenda and see if we can get support uh, to support them um, as they work through, uh, you know, passing legislation to expand this. We all know that um, that it takes money, you know, to expand broadband. And from what I understand, what they're trying to do is develop uh, uh, methods to, um, you know, to finance such uh, projects to expand the broadband. And I think it's a wonderful thing. And so I'm in fully support of that. And uh, so I'd like to make the motion that we adopt this resolution to support them. In, in, in so we have, a, we, have a, we have a motion by Mr. Mr. Uh, Mack and a second by Mr. Ard. Uh, I, I was contacted today by members of the Lewis, some of the Livingston Parish delegation. Uh, Representative Mincy, Senator Pope, and Speaker Sheck Snyder are very much in favor of this resolution. They have supported bills brought by Senator Mizell and Representative Desitel in the last session and plan on supporting them in the future and anything they can to improve, you know, the internet, you know, infrastructure within the parish. Uh, Representative, Representative uh, Desitel, I've known for a long time, he was a business partner of one of my constituents, that, you know, back, back a while back that, that had passed. And, 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 and he owned a company called Detail. He is very, you know, adept and in, 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 informed. He, uh, they laid uh, fiber optics along the interstate. They, and so he's very well knowledgeable in, in this, in this uh, what it's going to take to move forward in the rural areas. And, I think it would be a great thing for our parents to, 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 to uh, accept this and, and support this. I want to go ahead and get a, if nobody has any other comment, like a roll call vote on this, please. Can we get a second? Yeah, we got a second. Okay. Done by Mr. Hard. Mr. Mack. Yes. Mr. Wascombe. Yes. Mr. Talbert. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mr. McMorris. Yes. Mr. DeLatt. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Gardenhouse. Yes. Mr. Ard. Yes. Uh, item 14, parish president's report. The parish president is not going to be here tonight. He has a daughter birthday party that he needs to attend. So he called me and I told him I would handle this for him. Uh, this is an item. Uh, the, the, the safe house is actually uh, at, fire, at Fire Protection District 5 in Mr. Keene's district. Is that your district? Yes, sir. Uh, Y'all all saw the letter from Cloth Engineering on who the low bidder was. And it was kind of imperative that we can get food moving on this thing. This has been a long, drawn-out process. Uh, be, but because of lot restrictions and some other things, we're a little over budget. But everything's everything's copacetic now. We just need this resolution, as y'all have in front of y'all, that would uh, allow the parish president to move forward and go ahead and execute the contract. So we got a motion by Mr. Keene, a second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. If there's no objection, this item passes, and Ms. Sandy can send forward that resolution to the President's office. Yes. Item 15, Planning Commission recommendations. Mr. Sam DiGirolamo, the hardest working man in parish government. I agree. Thank you. Congratulations and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, first on the agenda is a subdivision with improvements. Uh, this is the Preserves at Grace Creek Phase 2 Revised Plan. No, this is not a Revised Plan. This is just Phase 2 Preliminary Plan. This is in Mr. Bubba Harris's district. Uh, Mr. Macklin Taylor, Mr. Billy is, is the engineer. It's off of Forrester Lat. It's a recommendation of the Livingston Parish Planning Commission to approve the revised preliminary plan for the Reserves at Grace Creek Phase 2. Okay, this is in Mr. Harris's district. Mr. Harris. True. Yes, sir. Uh, I didn't have a call, or if I did, I didn't catch it. But uh, anyway, Mr. King had a call. You want me to bring it up, what, what I got to call about? Yeah. Okay, Ms. Uh, Pajon sent me a text today, and she said she had talked to Bubba, but they, they talked about family is what she said more than anything. Well, yeah. true, true. Yeah. So what, what her concerns was, she wanted to know if they needed, if they were going to get an additional drainage impact study on the property since it's another uh, filing. Yeah. And I told her no, that once they get, the, don't they get the whole property done at one time? I think um, they, they go did. ahead, Mark. They, they did on that. So yeah, they, they do. Did. And then she okay. asked about this huge pile of dirt and what is the parish going to make them do with it? I have no idea. I, I would imagine that's where they scraped Well, I guess we'll have off. to wait till the project is complete when we go out there and make our final inspection. Because I don't know really what the pile of dirt right. meant for. And that's the only call that right. Bubba got on this. It ended up with me because I'm a friend of Pat. Now, so what see. I'll do is I'll, being you've got a question on it, I'll do a little bit of probing. Appreciate that. 
Okay, so do we have a motion and a second on this item to approve? No. Got a motion by Mr. Harris, got a second by Mr. King. Any objection? This item is approved. Item B, retreated Dubin Cross of the Dubin Subdivision Phase 1. Okay, this is uh, also in Mr. Bob Harris's district, uh, off Jubin Road or on Jubin Road. It's a recommendation of the Livingston Parish Planning Commission to approve the preliminary plat for the retreat at Jubin Subdivision Phase 1. Just again, being in Mr. Harris's district, do you have any comments, Mr. Harris? I'm trying to think about where this is at, <laughs> tell you the truth. Right there okay. close, to, right across the street from Carter Hill, is that Carter Hill? Yeah, there? yeah. That's where it's at. Oh, it's the one we had all the problems before? No, no, this is just getting started. This is I think we've a little piece of property in front of it, was what we were talking about before. I think it was a little piece of property in front of it that we somebody had called and said they didn't want it. Entrances too close together. And, uh, this is 37 yeah, acres. That, uh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. This is Harris, Councilman Harris, uh, Prescott Bailey. We met on this. Uh, it's been a couple months, probably, uh, right. probably about three now. Um, so it took us a little while to get everything lined up and done. But um, yeah, this is the one kind of uh, across. A little bit across the street from Carter Hills. Right, it backs um, up to uh, Ashland. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I just had one call on it today, and the lady, not just there, but she says, what are y'all going to do about all this development throughout the parish? We need to stop all this. I said, good luck, because you cannot stop it. Well, we can. Whether it's the right thing to do is we're going to debate soon. Do we have a motion? Yeah. No, hit motion by Mr. Harris. We have a second. We have a second by Mr. R. Is there any objection? Item carried. Item, thank you, sir, thank very you. much. Item C, Live Oak Apostolic Church. Well spoken. Uh, this is in Mr. Gary Talbot's district. Uh, they, it's a recommendation of the Livingston Parish Planning Commission to deny the preliminary site plan for the Live Oak uh, Apostolic Church. Uh, they had to get a letter in of no objection for the fence and for the, for the setback, and they did. The letter's in place, notarized at our office. So our recommendation is favorable. Y'all, and, and if y'all all look in your packet, the letter's there. I talked I talk to the minister, and, and he sent it to me, and then he sent it to planning and, and went to the council. Just didn't so, have it in time for the right, so didn't have it at the time of the planning commission. So I would like to ask... One of the council members to make a motion for this, another one to second. We've got a motion by Mr. Hard and second by Mr. King. If there's no objection, this passes. D, Berry Ridge Subdivision. Okay, this is in Mr. Randy Delatt's district. This is off of Fayard Road. Um, it is a recommendation of the Livingston Parish Planning Commission to deny the revised preliminary plat for Berry Ridge Subdivision with waivers. What was the waiver, Mr. Well, the waivers waivers were curb and gutter, and Morgan, correct me if I'm wrong. I think one of the waivers waivers was curb and gutter. They wanted to implant the, just a regular culvert inside the ditches, and then the 15 foot servitude calls for both sides of the road, the main entrance, and they wanted to just do one side of it. And I think, Mr. Barrett, yeah, you want to speak for it? Yeah, there's uh, got a question. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Yeah, yeah they come, come up. They come up. All right. <clears throat> sorry about that. I'm oh, no, sorry. I got to take this off. I can't talk with yeah, this thing. It's just terrible. So the two variances that have been named. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Clay Barrio. I'm the engineer for the project. Uh, I live at 11816 Burgess, Walker, Louisiana. So. The two waivers that were requested for this, one was to get rid of the curb and gutter, but to keep it as a subsurface drainage. In other words, we would still have the same type of um, water coming into the inlet. In fact, if you want to see examples of what we were wanting to do, you actually can look in front of the building right here. We would like to put in exactly what we have out in front here. And what that is, is you put your inlets every other lot, but instead of a curb and gutter that can impede the water, we simply have a little swale just like you have out there and the water can get off the road a lot easier. I'm not a big fan of curb and gutter, I'll be honest, because I find curb and gutter just tends to be a place for water to pool and restrict the water from getting off the road. 
However, the Planning Commission had to deny it because the way the ordinances are written, there's nothing in the ordinance that allows what we're doing. Therefore, we had to come before you and ask if we could get the waiver on it. But again, it is something that has been used here. It's used in the very front of this building for this type of drainage, and it does work. In my opinion, it works better than Mr. curb and gutter. Mr. Chair, <coughs> Mr. Chair, uh, is there anybody here that wants to speak on it? From, from is anybody else? I mean, I know Mr. Barely was very good. Is anybody else want to speak on this item? Okay, this, this is my thought process. The whole subdivision, the people were against it because of too much development. When is development going to stop? It seems like the current process right now is that to appease the people is to try to take on more water than what they were taking on in the past. I think they flipped the lake around and, and they feel like they can take in more water now based on the not being curvy gutter, but having a swell. And I can uh, expand on that a little more if you'd like me to. And, <coughs> and, excuse me. But, and you can expand on it in a few minutes. I don't have a problem with that waiver there. The waiver I do have a problem with is the 15-foot servitude on both sides. I think that 15-foot servitude needs to stay there on both sides, and I can live with them because I think they're improving the drainage for what they're doing there. It's still subsurface, and I can live with that way, but I, I can't live with the 15-foot. So, um, you can you can say yes. Um, pretty much how I feel exactly what you said. Uh, I think carbon gutter at times can be restricted, and uh, I, don't have a, I, I don't have a problem with with what you're, what you're wanting as far as the drain aspect that is servitude yeah. that I can't, I, that I have a problem with. I, I do have a problem with people designing subdivisions that don't meet our order. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to make a motion to deny it. Okay, so we got a motion to deny by Mr. King. Do we have a second? What was the requirement on the 15 foot servitude? Yeah, was it, well, let I me, mean, if you like that, I'll expand our fault process on the 15 foot servitude. Was normally <clears throat> when I have two service on, servitudes on opposite side of the road, I try to put sewer on one side and water on the other. Where we're asking to remove the 15 foot servitude, we don't have a sewer line. And so the one 15 foot servitude was sufficient for the utilities that we needed gas, water, and uh, telecommunications. So well, that was the reason say. for requesting the 15-foot servitude to be removed. Can Morgan answer? What, what, is, what does the ordinance say on that? We require 15-foot servitude on each side of the right way. Right. And you only put that on one side. What we the, asked. Now, I, I have a, uh, I mean, yeah. I, But that was the reason why. Now, yeah, so it I, wasn't I, that we were just flagrantly ignoring <laughs> regulations. It was That was the reason and the thought process behind it. So is the subdivision not capable of being drawn at this level with two servitudes on both sides? We can. That okay, so, we can. So, but, so. And then the other question I've got is we have an ordinance that allows you to, draw, to build a subdivision without curving gutter streets, but you've got to net out a lot per acre. So we allow a subdivision to be built without curving gutter. I'm just trying to figure out if we allow it, why you want to exceed the density on a specific subdivision that we allow for. There is an ordinance that allows for a subdivision to be built without curb and gutter street, but the requirement is that you net one lot per one acre of the development. So, so in essence, what you're trying to do is build a subdivision that allows for no curb and gutter, but expand on the density, which is specifically what this council, you know, designed. We allowed for that subdivision, but we did it so that we create estate type lots or bigger lots that people, you know, could, could build on. And, and, and because curb and gutter, tended to drive developmental costs up. You know, we did that in an effort to decrease density. So here we have a situation where we want to eliminate some of the costs that are incurred in curb and gutter, yet still maintain the density that exists in a curb and gutter subdivision. So I just think that, you know, it's a circumvent of the whole ordinance. And if the council wants to readdress the ordinance, then we probably ought to do that. But to solve that problem by waiver, I don't think is exactly how we need to do it this time. So so that's that. just my opinion. So we got a motion. motion. So we got a motion by Scooter and a second by Mr. R. If I could answer some one more discussion, because there was, there was some points brought up that I think, <clears throat> like I said, these people are organizing and they they watching them, and and I don't want to penalize them anymore by telling those people 
that no, we can't improve the drainage around you. That we now got so now they're going to be stuck with more water. You know, they, they lost the first battle in the preliminary. They lost the first battle. They they're not against this waiver. That not, not the, um, the the restriction of the right of way. They don't, they're not against the waiver of him being able to drain the property better than what he's draining it now. And I like and he can go in detail and then answer some of those questions. Yeah, because. The intent was not questions. necessary. Oh, I'm sorry. I just got some general questions. Whenever it's my turn. Okay, so how far how far are the houses in the subdivision? The, the distance between the houses. It's hard for me to determine that. Well, they're 61 foot wide lots, 61 and a half. So, um, if you take a typical house that is 40 feet wide or something like that in the front, you'll end up being probably what 20, 30 feet at least apart. Probably a little bit larger than that if I think about it. Um, Probably about 40 feet if you take it with the average width of 40 feet. Depend, every house is a little bit different, so it depends on how they build them, how far apart they'll be. But they'll definitely be within the required setbacks of the parish ordinances the side setbacks, the rear setbacks, and the front setbacks. So we will meet that requirement. I got another question. This may be for you or maybe for the parish review engineer, but sure. the current drainage plan, it appears that. All of the drainage is planned to come to this retention pond. Is that a retention pond or a front, front yes, sir. road ditch? Yes, sir. This looks like a massive project for all of that just to drain to that area right there. I mean, do we really feel confident that the, the way that this is designed, you know, with the capacity of the pipes and diameter and all that type of stuff, that that water is, that falls on this property is going to be able to make it to that front road ditch and not I mean, because if you go look at this project, I mean, I know Randy knows, I mean, it's piled mud all the way around this thing. So, I mean, I was just trying to make sure that we didn't give a negative impact on the surrounding property <coughs> owners. I mean, I'd, like, I'd like your yeah, professional no, I, opinion I'll of that. be happy to answer that question. So, one of the things that we're going to be doing, we've discussed with the public works, and they've agreed to actually improve the road ditch in front of us. The road ditch right now is much shallower than it needs to be. They've agreed to deepen the road ditch in front of us at least a foot and a half. Then with the retention pond, we're able to get the water to drain to this retention pond. The thing about the water, and one of the things we looked at and flipped this retention pond to the front side was that very reason. This is the way that the water wanted to go. In fact, we noticed that we have water coming onto us from the north and from the east. And right now, you're right. Water coming on this property is not moving very quickly across this property, but by us putting perimeter ditches all around here bringing in our retention pond, which if I'm not mistaken, perimeter ditches, I don't remember if they're actually required or not. We're putting them in one way or the other. But we're actually going to take the water from our neighbors and convey it faster through this property than it currently is right now because it's going to go into our detention pond and stay there. So we're actually going to improve the drainage. Of, now, we're not going to necessarily fix and make the drainage perfect around us, but we are going to make it better. So we won't have a negative impact. Morgan, can I ask you a question? The, 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 the ditch that they're draining to the retention, I don't know if you've looked at it or anything. You don't know. Have you looked? Is the ditch a fail now? Does the, does the ditch fail now in its job? The ditch that your retention is going to in a current rainfall, it, fail, it fails now, obviously, if you're going to deepen it a foot and a half. I feel like the ditch is much shallower than it needs to be right now. And um, I, I'm not, I don't want to use a word as such as saying that it fails. Because, I mean, honestly, I haven't been there during a heavy rainfall. I don't necessarily live. But I can tell you that the ditch is much shallower than it needs to be. And it needs to be cleaned out and it needs to be maintained. There is a cross culvert, not very far, that is already deeper. Right now, this ditch, the cross culvert is about 24 inches. And only the top six inches of the pipe is open because the bottom of the ditch is there. We're going to deepen that ditch to the bottom of that culvert. So whether it's failing or not, I know that we will improve the water flow in that ditch because we're actually going to make full use of that culvert that crosses the road now. So Morgan, on our current, I don't, our current ordinance way it exists, we talk about the upstream and downstream look. Where, how far on this deal are you going to be able to look? Are you going to look at just where that, just where deepening that ditch? Are we going to look at the impact of the cross culvert and the people on the other side of the highway? How far are you going to be able to look at the impact of this development? Because he, I mean, he, he talks about moving water faster, which sometimes the, the faster is terrible for the people that live downstream, especially on the other side of the highway. So I'm just trying to figure out how far are you going to, how far 
is our current ordinance going to let you look at the downstream impact of, with this with, with this development? If he's improving that ditch, he's going to have to show me that it's okay. Right. Um, but I'm probably not going to look past his roadside ditch if he shows me that he can hold it within that ditch, and that he'll have to show me that the cross culvert is sufficient. So, so, so. That's only if, <coughs> if he's increasing it, which I haven't seen the constrained impact. So, so I mean, I just, but when I hear when I hear the concern of getting water drained faster. The, the, the negative impact downstream is, is pretty bad or that's something like that. Wait, what I meant a hundred percent, it's going to drain faster from the neighboring properties. Then it's going to come into the detention pond. Now the detention pond will restrict the flow and meter that flow into that ditch. Mm -hmm. What deepening the ditch is going to be is mean that we'll have the depth to get the water into when that. When it leaves, yeah. Right, right. So yeah, I, I didn't mean to imply that I was going to flow more water off this site at a faster rate. Our detention pond is going to prevent that. I just got one more question sure. for me with the area and Randy is to uh, the lateral ditch that that road ditch drains to. Does the parish have documented um, papers where that's a publicly maintained lateral that can be cleaned out? Because if you dig this road ditch, what we're going to happen is, is nothing. It's, it's not going to do any good at that lateral. If we don't have a publicly maintained lateral ditch to whatever large tree area we have, I mean, we're going to have a big problem there. So, I mean, I'm just curious, do we have that documentation? I mean, can that be considered whenever you're looking at this drainage plan? I couldn't uh, answer that question, honestly, <coughs> until I get back in my office and yeah. research that. Yeah. Because I, I don't know. But, but if yeah, we're so going to use it, we would have to have that. I agree. That's yeah. one thing we will have to have. Yeah, and one more thing, too, is, uh, is this actually in a flood zone? Is this, is this in a flood zone? Are we, are we building up? No, zone? I don't believe it. Yeah, we're not, we're flood zone X, so, yeah. So, is there any other comment? I know we have a motion and a second to deny or to concur with the, the, the planning, planning commission's recommendation. Is there any more comment among the council? Is there a substitute just, the motion that you made? Or? Just, just one more comment. Guys, that's why the waiver is there. Because the ordinance we said many times cannot make an ordinance or design an ordinance to help everybody. This is a situation where the, it's going to be built regardless. Now all he's trying to do is help the people by draining the water off of them and not holding. The road he's talking about has no ditch on it, okay? They're gonna deepen the ditch, all right? Also, with him building his, cub, uh, his curb and gutter and stand, what happens is the water won't be able to go to the retention pond as fast across the road for the, the people that are complaining. So now the water's gonna be able to go quickly to the retention pond, which would help those people that are currently flooding now. So let me, Mr. Delaney, this is your district, correct? Yes. Are you, are you in favor of giving I, this? I'm in favor of the waiver for the, sub, for the uh, curb subsurface drainage. I'm not in favor of the waiver on both sides of the with doing the 15. So do you want to make a, a, an alternate motion? I would like to make an alternate motion with giving the waiver for subsurface drainage. I'll second that motion. So wait, 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 wait. I got more questions. You, you made for current and gutter, not for because he, he said he was putting no, subsurface. No, he's the, the most. Right. The, the, we are putting subsurface. The, the, the waiver, the motion is to allow the, the elimination of, to grant the waiver for the curb and gutter, but not to grant the waiver for the additional servitude reduction. So, 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 right. he's still going to have to go back and redesign. So basically, what, what Randy's saying is that he would like to allow them to have the waiver for no curb and gutter. But not to have the waiver on the on the no servitude on the entrance. So, and we have a second on that from John. So let's vote. Can I, can all I ask vote? No, we, we well, got This is a new motion. We, this we is a new vote. motion. With more but questions. I think the way the motion, when you have a substitute, then you go vote on the substitute. Then you can have discussion. So we need to vote on the substitute motion. We need to vote on the substitute motion, and then we can go back and discuss the other. Miss Sandy, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Hyde. No. Mr. Wasco. Yes. Mr. Talbert? No. Mr. Harris? No. Mr. McMorris? Yes. Mr. Delat? Yes. Mr. King? No. Mr. Gurley Yes. Mr. R? Yes. Okay, so the motion carries to grant the waiver on the curb and gutter and not grant the waiver on the servitude. So does it need to go back to planning for a redesign or can it just go straight to Morgan and you just got to redesign the servitude? How does that work, Sam? I can change everything. Okay, so so in essence, you, you've been granted you've been granted the waiver on the curb and gutter. You've not been granted waiver on the loss of servitude. So that's I think. Thank you. It's already working before we plan.
from you guys and y'all made the determination. So, so I would think in theory that I would think in theory that he just needs to he just needs to redesign, go straight to Morgan, and he needs to do the redesign. So, okay, item sixteen. Thank you, sir. Thank y'all for y'all's time. Addition of roads for consideration to the capital outlay priority list. Look, we've got we've got uh, six roads. We're going to take them all at one time. Uh, Stubbs Street, located in Council District 4 by Mr. Wascom. North College Drive, located in Council District 4 by Mr. Wascom. Cedar Street, located in Council District 4 by Mr. Wascom. Dixon Jones Boulevard, located in Council District 3 by Maurice Luther King. Uh, Vera McGowan, located in Council District 7 by Mr. Tracy Gerlinghouse. And First Street, located in Council District 9 by Mr. Shane Mack. Now understand, this is just an addition to the list for consideration. So can we get a motion on that? Do we have do we have any discussion? We've got a motion by Mr. Gerlinghouse, Mr. Mack, and Mr. Keene, and a second by the same three. Uh, <laughs> I mean, everybody's hand went up at the same time. So uh, is there any objection to adding these to the road list? None, so it carries unanimously. Item 17, to accept the 2021 capital outlay priority road list as presented by Mr. Billy Taylor, Paris Road Engineer, by Mr. Sam Pizarro, Public Works Director. We got Mr. Sam, Billy, y'all want to come up and talk, talk about this for just a second? I think everybody, uh, we've talked about the list before. I think y'all got a copy of the overall list. Uh, it's got about 30 roads on it, and we're projecting about 7.7 .7, uh, construction. We'll know the final number once we get designed. Uh, we'd like to ask that you accept this road list and we'll proceed uh, we're putting out the, the project for a uh, bid so we can get it going for this year. We'd like to ask you to accept the road list. These okay. roads that we just brought in, are, that on, are they on that list? There's, there's, uh, they're on there. No. There are a couple yes. of them on there. Oh, that's a big one. Okay. Big one. Okay. And they're listed in district order, so it'll be easier for y'all to find. So this is not including any extra money we may get in April. That's correct. Okay. Well, we, 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 we pretty much stretched the limit. We didn't know. we didn't leave Billy a lot of reserve or overrun on this thing. So if we go over, we're going to be having to ask him. He, he got to haggle. We got to ask Miss, Miss Jennifer <laughs> some more funds. But yeah, I think everybody's been well represented here. Everybody's looked at it. Is everybody everybody happy with it? We want to. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Mr. Gerlinghouse. Second by Mr. Uh, Mack. Uh, let's go ahead and roll call vote on this so it's on the record. Mr. Mass. Yes. Mr. Wasson. Yes. Mr. Calvert. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mr. Wet Morris. Yes. Mr. Delat. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Gerlinghouse. Yes. Mr. R. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. Good job. Item 18 was a constituent request for discussion regarding drainage and media services, internet, phone, and cable. Uh, that item, Mr. Navarre could not make it tonight, so that item has been pulled. Uh, Randy, do you want to open? Do you, is there anything you want to say, or we just want to move? Let, wait till Mr. Bark can talk about it at late day. Uh, I've been he wore me out on it the last couple of weeks. So I ain't nothing I want to say. Okay, I got you. <laughs> Item 18: Name of an unnamed private road, Zigway Road, located off Louisiana Highway 42 for 911 purposes in Council District 8. Mr. Randy Delat. All y'all have a letter in front of you. Mr. Randy, would you like to comment on this or make a motion? Yes. Uh, which one is it? Zig's way. Item, uh, item uh, 19. Okay. Yes, yes, okay. I remember getting that letter. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I'll make a motion. Got a motion by Mr. Randy, got a second by Mr. McMorris. Any objection? No objection. Item carries. Uh, item 20, waiver request of section 125-27 driveway culverts and subsurface drainage to allow subsurface drainage in a subdivision. You know, we can do these individually or we can do them as a group. Y'all all have looked at them. Y'all have them in your, does anybody have any opposition to the ones in their district? Does anybody have any opposition to the ones in their district? No, but I got a question. I talked to Mr. Sam about these and we changed it up kind of how we're doing it. Well, some of these, some like the one I've got was 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 a was, junior went out in October and, and somehow it just got skipped. So even though some of these are going to be addressed differently in the future, I think these are all. Yeah, pretty, I went and looked at mine and I'm fine with it. I just wanted to make sure that people know that the way Mr. Sam portrayed it to me is that instead of sending people out, spending a half day out there doing a profile of the thing, and then we come back and go, no, I'm not allowing that. 
If you're going to present it to the councilman, you go look at it and say, yeah, I, I don't think it'll be an issue. And so if they find that it is an issue when they do the profile, then they'll tell them, no, they can't do it. Okay. But if it, if it fits, then we'll let them do it. Okay. Can, do all, are y'all comfortable with grouping these together? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, so item A is Watch a Little Farm, Plot 34 from Mr. David Anthony. Like I said, that was one that, that Mr. Jr. looked at uh, several months ago and said it would work. Uh, Beachwood Drive, B, Lot 17 on Linkwood. Scooter had gone out and looked at it, and, and DPW had looked at it and said it would work. Uh, C, Country Acres, Lot 14A uh, in Mr. McMorris's district, and Falcon Crest, Lot 7A4 in Mr. McMorris's district. Are you comfortable with both? Okay, DPW said they work. Mr. McMorris happy with them. So let's consider a lot of one. Can we get a motion? Motion. Got a motion by Mr. Gerlinghouse, second by Mr. Mack. Is there any objection? No objection, those carry. Um, item 21, board reappointments and appointments. Let's, we're gonna have to take these all individually. Uh, let's move to A, Fire Protection District number one, Mr. Mack. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm my page here. This is two parish appointments and a concurrence on the Albany appointment, Mr. Mack. Yeah, I'm just trying to find my page here. Let's see here. Good gosh. Good. Okay, our two appointments is uh, Benton Morgan, I'd like to reappoint him. He's doing an awesome job. And um, Lisa Stilley. Kara, she's doing a great job. I'd like to reappoint her. Two year appointments. Uh, make the motion. Uh, I'll second. You need to concur with the Albany appointment. We need to ratify the yeah, Albany Yeah, we need appointment. to ratify. That's, that's correct. Uh, Derwin Miley, uh, that's the Albany appointment. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Mack, second by Mr. Gerlinghouse on the, the two parish appointments and the concurring of the Albany appointment. Everybody in favor of that? No objection. So ordered item B, fire protection 10, Mr. Mack. Yep, yep. Okay, this one will be pretty easy too. Need to reappoint. Um, well, it looks like I have four appointments. Mr. Art has one. Um, but my four was uh, Richie Neal. I'd um, like to reappoint him to your appointment. Mr. Charles Ray Deal, I'd like to reappoint him to, uh, to your appointment. Ms. Janie Alford, to your appointment. I'd like to reappoint her. And then Mr. Jason Hodges, reappoint him to your appointment. Fire District 10. And Mr. Art. Brian, uh, uh, yeah, reappoint Mr. Brian Berkelock. Yeah. Okay, so we have a we have a we've got all five of reappointments. We have a motion, Mr. Gerlinghouse. We have a second, Mr. R. No objection. This carries. Item C, fire protection district district four. This is the ratification of the city of Walker's board member by Mr. Gerlinghouse. Walker City Council has. Uh, Voted unanimously to reappoint Mr. Darren Blevins to that position. So, um, I make a motion that we do so. Okay, no. Uh, there's a there's a deal. Okay, so the Robert Dugas chairman at large appointed by the board. Do we have the minutes on that? We don't have the minutes on that. Okay, so this motion is only on the reappointment or concurrence with the Walker City Council on Mr. Blevins. We have a motion by Mr. Gerlinghouse, second by Mr. Ard. Any objection? None. So let's move to item D, Fire Protection District 5. This is Mr. Harris and Mr. Wask. Yeah, there's two of them. Um, Robert Johnson and Wesley Sorensen. Wesley Wesley Sorensen. Sorensen. Okay, so Mr. Harris would like you to reappoint those? Mr. Yeah, and I'd like to. Uh, for now, go ahead and uh, reappoint Mr. Chris Kench in District 4. Okay, so we've got a we've got a motion on the floor to reappoint Mr. Johnson and Sorensen and Kenshin to the board of Fire Protection District 5. Do I have a motion? Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Harris. We have a second by Mr. Mack. Is there any objection? No objection. Fire pro item E, Fire Protection, Fire Protection District 7. This is Mr. Mc this is for Mr. McMorris. Yes, sir, I'd like to make a motion. We got Jeff Dollar, Charles Thompson, Justin Wheat to reappoint them to a two year term. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. McMorris, second by Mr. DeLatt to, to reappoint Mr. Fowler, Thompson, and Mr. Wheat. No objection, so ordered. Item, uh, this will be item F, fire prediction eight, Mr. McMorris. The same thing here, we have two. We have Fabian Gridnack and Brian Bur uh, 
Okay, okay so we, we got a we got a motion by Mr. Remorse to appoint them. Second by Mr. Delag. Any objection? None. Those carry. Item G, Fire Protection District Nine, by Mr. Randy Delag. I'd like to. Um, Mr. Sean Bersage has resigned due to job concerns, and I'd like to replace him with Mr. Keith Landry. Second. Okay, we, you got to. What about Mr. Hood and Mr. Luke for reappointment? You want to do that now, or you want? To I thought they've already reappointed. It says that their term expired on one one twenty one, so they're they're here okay. to be reappointed. Okay, yes, I want to reappoint them. Okay, so we've got a motion by Mr. Delat to reappoint Mr. Hood, Mr. Luke, and to replace Mr. Bergenick. Ber uh, yeah, Bursa J. Bursa J with Mr. Keith Landry. We got a motion by Mr. Delat. We have a second. Second. Second by Mr. McMorris. Any objection? None. So ordered. Item eight, Waterway Commission by Mr. Randy Delat. Okay, uh, Heidi, Miss Heidi moved to Texas, so I want to replace her with Gabe Savig. And then the alternate, uh, Robert Payne will replace with Kerry McNabb. Okay, so in District 6, Mr. David Richardson? That's that's uh, yeah, that's gonna be mine. That's you you want yes, yes. Okay, so we so we've got we've got a we've got a replacement of Miss Heidi Tiger with Mr. Gabe Savick and a reappointment of Mr. David Richardson for District 6 and an appointment of Mr. Robert King as alternate for, for Mr. from District 8. We've got a motion from no, Mr. Wait a minute. Uh Kerry McNabb for Robert Payne. Yeah. Oh, Kerry, oh, I'm sorry. Kerry McNabb's replaced Robert Ping. I yeah. apologize. Uh, so we've got a motion that, that's going to put Kerry McNabb in Robert Ping's place. We've got a motion by Mr. Delat, second by Mr. McMorris. Is there any objection? None that carries. Item 21I, Livingston Parish Airport Authority, ratification of Louisiana State Senate appointment by Senators Roger Pope. Uh, Y'all all see the letter from, from, from Mr. Roger Pope. He would like to appoint Mr. B.J. Stewart uh, in Mr. Rusty Howard's spot. Uh, can we get a motion? Uh, got a motion by uh, John, second by Sh uh, Mr. Mack. Uh, any objection? None. That carries. Uh, item J, Livingston Parish Gas District Number 1. This is a district shared by Mr. Ard and Mr. Mack. Mr. Who wants to go first? Uh, I, I'm actually going to appoint, reappoint Mr. Gerald Mack, Butch Mack. Okay, and Mr. 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 Mack. Yeah, going to reappoint Mr. Frank Murphy. He's doing an awesome job. Okay, so man. so we have a we have an item. We have a, a reappointment from Mr. Mack and Mr. Murphy. Can we get a motion? Make a motion by Mr. Ard, second by Mr. Mack. Is there no objection? So ordered. Let's take up the addendum real quick, if y'all don't mind. It's, it's, it's on the front page on the left side. Item A1 is a resolution to direct the permit office to release the permit to authorize utility connection for Henry and Lisa Williams on George White Road, unit A4 in Holden. This has been resolved, so we're not going to address this tonight. Item A2 is board reappointment for Gravity Drainage District 2. I put that item on the agenda. I've been waiting for an attorney general's opinion for a couple of months on this particular item. I would like to appoint Miss Lauren White. She has moved to the Watson area and I would like to appoint Miss White to serve on Gravity Drainage District number two. So I need somebody to make that motion for me. Got a motion by Mr. King, second by Mr. Ard. Is there any objection to this? None so ordered. Uh, let's move back to the regular agenda. Let's move back to the regular agenda. Uh, Item oh, 22 and 23 are being uh, temporarily, they're going to be pulled for this meeting and I think they're going to be addressed at a later date. Yep. Item 24, committee reports. We have not had a committee meeting uh, this year, so there's nothing to report since the last time, except Citizens Drainage Committee, there are three remaining appointments, Mr. R, Mr. Wascom, and Mr. McMorris. Do y'all have anybody that y'all would like to appoint at this no. point in time? Yeah, which, which committee was that? This is the drainage committee. The one that Randy established? Yeah, the one that, one that Randy got established. I do whenever you're ready. Okay, go ahead. What, what you got, Mr. Wasco? I have Mr. Doug Palmer. Okay. Uh, and I, Sandy, I'll get you his contact. Uh, before we leave here tonight, I'll give you his name and information. You still, you still. I have a meeting uh, next week with the new mayor of Livingston. Okay, so so Mr. Ard wants to defer until he talks so to the mayor of Livingston. Mr. McMorris. 
Yes, I, I have a Kevin Hole. Okay. That, that and you're gonna get the you're gonna get the ladies' yeah, information. Okay. Information. You can send it to me. Okay, so we're gonna have we've got we've got two two appointments. Uh, y'all have got the lady y'all got the people's names, ladies. Is there any objection to those two appointments? None so ordered. Twenty five, district attorney's report. Nothing. Nothing to report. I I've never seen anybody get paid so much to say nothing. <laughs> uh, twenty six, councilman comments. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, real quick, uh, I, I'm really glad we're moving forward with the uh, getting uh, resolution to uh, help try to get internet, high speed internet access into rural areas. I, I just find it strange that you can censor the information that's on that internet, though. So, what good, how fast you get? Nothing. I, you know, I get a false information. I, I find that really troubling. So, uh, other than that, I I'm really glad we're getting high speed internet to rural areas. I just wish it wasn't censored. <clears throat> Thank you. Any any other comments? Hold on, let's see what I've done wrong. Let's, let's figure out what yeah. we've done so far that we're not supposed to do. Committees, appoint new members. I'm gonna tell you, we haven't really. We're gonna we're gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit and talk to you about a couple things, and we're gonna I'm gonna visit with somebody and make sure everybody's good. I hadn't done that yet because I wasn't really positive that I was gonna win this election <laughs> or, or be appointed chairman, so I didn't want to put the cart before the horse. So we'll address that in the in the coming days. You know, there are a couple of rules I want to I want to talk to you about. But look, I think there's a couple things we can do to make the meetings a little more efficient. You know, we vote on introduction. And you know we don't really have to vote on introductions. We we could we could absolutely by changing our rules, and we're going to talk to Sandy about it right before the council. We could just read an introduction, set the hearing date, and then we can discuss it. A lot of times we start discussing proposed ordinances before the before the public's around to discuss it. Whatever we could make our meetings a little more efficient with some few changes. So we're going to talk about some rule changes and bring before y'all for ratification at the next meeting that's just one of them off the top of my head that i think we could do that mike could help speed some things along any other comments yeah real quick uh, i appreciate that uh you talked about uh not having an introduction I, I think to have an ordinance you're required to call for an introduction to have a public hearing i, I believe we're before gonna, you could do the ordinance we're, we're, right? gonna have, we're gonna have an introduction we just don't need to vote on the introduction if you think about what we do we read an introduction then we ask for a motion to introduce then we have a second and then a lot of times if it's something controversial, we'll start, we we'll, might debate it 10 or 15 minutes before we vote on introduction. In theory, all we've got to do is introduce the ordinance and set the public hearing, and then we can have our debate at the public hearing. We end up debating ordinances two Twice. or three times. And so I'm, right. just, I'm just trying to make it a little more efficient. I, I guess what I'm saying is if, if it's bad legislation, that's in place so you, you can have a safety net because if you don't have a public hearing, you can't even call it. You can't even have a, a, an ordinance or a motion to come. So I've seen people kill ordinances by stopping it at the public hearing the very first time by vote. If you eliminate that. Come with introduction. Yeah, yeah introduction. the introduction. If you eliminate that, you're eliminating the safety net to 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 bring in bad legislative well legislation. And, 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 and sometimes sometimes you know what uh, no, I mean, the idea is that public debate typically you know a i lot agree of times we'll have a public debate if we if we're open-minded and aren't closed and we, right. we have discussion right. bad legislation tends to sh show itself anyway and public debate on bad legislation try to lose. i mean we saw we saw bad legislation pass yesterday you know at, at, at the, at the capitol and 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 you know there was little or no ram full debate you know what i'm talking about and so i think public debate no is important and no so anything. the ability to be able to, to 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 you know not be able to kill something before the public kind of discusses it seems to be uh, uh something that i'm not in favor of but but it was it's all in the it's, look it's whatever the wishes of the council are at this point in time i'm just trying to look at and i understand for speed I, I, i'm okay with speeding things up <laughs> I, I think if it's gonna, I think it's gonna be. That's right. Yeah, I hear you. Well, you can't if you don't have a vote. Well, in theory, in theory, if you just introduce, you introduce, and you yeah. deal later. But yeah. I mean, look, we'll talk about it. I just that was one item that, that I know that I, you know, the we'll possibility to, to make the meetings more efficient. If there's I, no, I, I got one, okay, one quick Arden comment. comment. Uh, I want to, I want to kind of comment real Same. quick on the littering about the constable. I know we're wanting to go to the. Uh, ordinance committee with it and look at it and I would I, I would like to ask whoever's on there to look at it. if we're going to collect any kind of fees from this 
to see if there's any way to use these fees for a literary pickup program versus going in someone's pocket. Yeah. Well, they're going to find people. Let's use that money to clean up our parish. We could probably do something with that fifty percent of parish receipts. Yeah, I mean, state state yeah. law identifies sure. where the other fifty percent goes, and well, I don't. We I don't mean, look, we need to, to if we if we're if we're not in favor of the constables well, and we definitely get that, then we need to talk talk to the legislators right. in our in our delegation and say that we're not in favor of that. Motion but, to but adjourn. I got a motion by Mr. Uh, Wasco. Got a second by Mr. R. No objection. Thank you.